I'm very excited to come and speak to you again this morning and we are starting a new series on entering into a state of righteousness and we are going to look at what a state of righteousness is we're going to um, look at quite a few programs and we're going to build up a a new flow and a depth in the holy spirit i kind of wanted to call this advanced anointing but i decided to call it rather um, the state of righteousness and so I'm going to teach you a lot more what the state of righteousness is, how to enter into a state of righteousness, how to flow in a state of righteousness. And I want to show you scripturally what the Bible tells us, what really the new covenant, the New Testament has uh, promised us and what Jesus has told us. And how sometimes we've completely missed God. We misunderstood what God's intention was. Hallelujah for the New Testament. So let's just pray. Father... Lord, I know you want to come and prepare the way before your people. And I want to pray right now, Lord, help me to prepare the hearts of people to be able to enter in to that state of righteousness. I pray for your anointing that will flow as I teach and that people will be set free, that people will get a grasp in the spirit of what you want to show them, Lord. And that they will take hold of it with all their hearts and their minds. That there will be a great breakthrough for them, Lord. There will be a great freedom, Father. And your power will break through in their lives. And they will see the effect of the glory of God in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I call this preparing the way before the Lord. Now, in order to enter into a state of righteousness, we need to prepare the way. Now, there was a prophecy in Isaiah 40 verse 1. And before I say this, you know, in 2012, I did exactly this. So over a, a period of nearly 10 weeks, I was teaching people how to enter into a state of righteousness. And then we had a mighty outpouring, like a mighty rushing wind that came into the building. We were about 20 people and the building literally began to shake because of the presence and the power of God. And so as we entered into a certain condition, which is the state of righteousness, we saw the power of God break through in a mighty way. And that's what the next few programs are going to be about. So put on your seatbelt, uh, keep on following and keep on exercising what I'm teaching you. This is not just teachings. It's teachings that you need to exercise and make part of you and become like. Hallelujah. And so in Isaiah 40 verse 1, the prophet Isaiah prophesied and he said, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to the heart of Jerusalem. Cry to her that a time of service and her warfare are ended, that her punishment is accepted and that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received punishment from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice of one who cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way of the Lord. Clear away the obstacles. Make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted and filled up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked and the uneven shall be made straight and level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory, the majesty, and the splendor of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, the prophet Isaiah is speaking and he says, he's actually shouting out. He says, God is saying, comfort, comfort my people. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we, we come to God and we're like, God, I'm so sorry I've sinned, Lord. I'm so sorry I've done wrong. And that's good. It's good to, to, to realize what you've done. But God says, you know what? As a Christian... As one who has received the Holy Spirit, as one who has received salvation, God says, I want to comfort you. And he says, I want you to comfort my people and say to them, your warfare is ended. Hallelujah. He says, speak tenderly to the heart of Jerusalem. So, so God wants to come with a new way of speaking, not a way of judgment, a way of love to come and show you his tender heart towards us showing us his mercy and his loving kindness. And he says, listen, your warfare is over. 
Hallelujah. I believe there's so much misunderstanding in the church about warfare. And here the prophet prophesies and says, spiritual warfare, your fight, your battle is over. Hallelujah. And so we want to come into a place in the next few weeks where I'm going to show you how you can enter into a place where you will see the battle is already won. Now he says, prepare the way before the Lord. So there is something that needs to happen in order to enter into a place where we can truly receive the glory of God, where we can truly experience the glory of God. You know, in these last days, um, on the, we have got a radio channel called um, Rainbow Gospel Radio, and I've got a program on there called The Prophetic Witness, and I'm currently speaking about revival and how to prepare for a revival. And so this is what God wants to do. He wants to break through in His glory on the earth. Hallelujah. But before He can break through, before He can break through and break in, He needs to prepare our hearts. And here He says, listen, what needs to happen? We need to clear away all the obstacles, all the blockages that has blocked us from God. He says, first, make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. You know, when you build a highway, a highway is a, is a very broad road and a very straight road. It can't be going up and down and be very bumpy because it will not be a, a smooth ride for a lot of cars coming at a high speed on a highway. And therefore, we need to prepare a way that can become like a highway. You know, when a river goes through a jungle, it meanders through the forest and it finds a way through um, the jungle as it goes through a path of least resistance. And so in the same way, God wants us to come to a place where we have the path of least resistance. First, we have to do, we have to do the prophet says to us, we have to take every valley and lift it up and fill it up. But what does that mean? What does it mean to fill up a valley? He says, every mountain must be made low. And he says, every crooked place must be made straight. And every rough place must be made smooth. So this is a, a, an example that the prophet gives us so that we could really prepare the way before the Lord. So what is a valley? Valleys are low places in our lives. Valleys are valleys of depression. Valleys where we feel like, you know, we are not good enough. We have a lack of value. We have a lack of identity. We have a weak identity. We don't understand who we are in Christ. Uh, we, have, we feel insignificant. We feel like we are not worthy before God. And these are valleys. And God wants to fill up the valleys so that the valley can be straight again. Then he says he wants to take every high hill and make it low. And so high hills are high places. High places are places of, is an attitude of pride. It's an attitude of independence. I don't need God. I have arrived. Uh, a haughtiness looking down on people, thinking you are better than others, thinking that you are more self-righteous in your own reliance on yourself. There's normally a selfishness in such a person. They don't need anybody else. They can do everything for themselves and they don't care about anybody else. And they are normally in such a performance mode that they can step on people and don't care about people. Hallelujah. And so God says, I want to now make the valleys fill up and the hills low so that we could have a straight and smooth road. Hallelujah. There's also crooked places in our lives. And these crooked things we're going to sort out also in some future teachings. But they are wrong teachings. Things that comes into our lives where God wants to break things. I remember in the former program, Sally Holy Spirit just spoke about bloodline curses. And so there are things that are wrong. We have wrong understanding biblically of what Jesus had paid for and the implication of His price. And therefore there's these crooked places in our lives. We don't understand why when we pray, our prayers are not getting answered. Um, there's a lot of biblical or scriptural traditions uh, there's good traditions in the church, but there's also traditions that are not scriptural. And God wants to get those unscriptural traditions out of our lives. Not rightly dividing the Word of God. We're going to look at what it means to rightly divide the Word of God in future teachings. 
Um, and then there could be strongholds in our lives. And God wants to get these strongholds out of our lives. Hallelujah. All the rough places. What are the rough places? There's a harshness in us. There's a hardness in us. We are unkind. We are impatient. We have a lack of wisdom when we operate and when we do things. We are hasty. We are unthankful. All these things are the rough places in our lives. And God wants to make them smooth with His love. Hallelujah. And so when things become smooth, they are simple. They are not complicated. There's no exceptions to the rule anymore. Um, there's a very clear flow. There's no blockages. It's now simple second nature for me to do it. It's not hard to do it. It is really who I am, not who I'm trying to be. And as I line myself up with the character of Jesus Christ and with the love of God, with the righteousness of God and with the faith of Jesus Christ, we're going to begin to see amazing breakthrough. Hallelujah. And so a highway will now be made ready. And when that highway is ready in your life, then you're going to see um, the, the love of God, the gentleness and the kindness of God break through in your life. You're going to see a patience. You're going to see um, a faithfulness in your heart, a self-control, an ability to, to really live in the character and the nature of God. And I just sense His presence right now. I just feel a, like a tongue of fire that comes into my mind. And God says, a mind stayed on me is pleasing to me. Hallelujah. And then you will see the glory. Then you will see the power. You will see the presence. You will see the promises of God break through in your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, before we end off, I want to just quickly speak about what is sin. Now, sin is missing the mark. You see, if I take an arrow and I shoot an arrow to a board and I miss the target, the, the center or the bull, then I've missed the mark. And that is what sin really is. You know, if we miss God's intention for our lives, we are sinning. If we miss what God intended for us, what God wanted us to have, and we don't have it, we are sinning. We are missing the mark. And so in John, in Mark chapter uh, 1 verse 3, God sent a man, his name was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist came and he prepared the way before the people. And it says, one crying in the wilderness, shouting in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make his beaten track straight level and possible. And the John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness and he was preaching a baptism of repentance, a change of mind for the better, heartily amending one's ways with abhorrence of his past sin in order to obtain forgiveness and release from sins. And so the people came confessing their sins to John the Baptist. Now, what I want to say to you is, you know, repentance has become a swear word to many people. Oh, you need to repent or perish. But repentance is just a change of mind. It's a change of the way you think. And when you change your way of thinking, God's going to set you free. And it could go with a deep realization that I was deceived, that I was a sinner, that I've sinned against God. Yes, it will go with that. But the real change is a perspective change in your mind. And that is true repentance. And so when we're going to become to prepare the way before the Lord, we are going to change a great perspective in your mind in order to get you right with God. Hallelujah. Um, so I just want to pray right here. Um, there's still a lot I want to say, but our time has, has run out. And I'll do that in the next program. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, that you send us messengers ahead of us. Thank you for your word and Jesus. Even John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way before your people, Lord. And I pray right now that hearts will begin to line up. I pray, Father, that people will begin to see in a different way. I pray that your Spirit will open their eyes to see as you want them to see, Lord, and that every valley in their lives will be filled up, every high hill will be made low, and Lord, that the highway will be made ready, and that your glory can be revealed 
in their lives. Yes, Lord, I pray for your anointing to teach them how to fill up these valleys and how to break down these, um, these high hills and how to make the rough places smooth so that your glory can be revealed. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you for having joined us in this program on preparing the way before the Lord. Amen.